This illustration uh, covers the requirements for sizing uh, the conductors based upon the amps uh, in accordance with 240.120 volt single phase three wire systems. Now notice 240.120 volt is, is used for most all dwelling units. Uh, it's also this voltage is used for smaller uh, commercial buildings, but it's a very active usive, usable voltage by designers and installers. So the transformer again is 100 kVA. But instead of dividing the total uh, VA uh, by the uh, 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 208 volts as we previously did, we're dividing by 240 volts. So in calculating the amps of the transformer, we come up with 417 instead of 481 uh, using the lower voltage which would produce a higher amps. Now the notes one and two are the same so we won't uh, cover those again. But notice the service equipment enclosure, it states it's a grounded neutral conductor. Now if it is a neutral conductor, then we know 220.61 is uh, used to produce the larger uh, conductor between the grounded conductor and the neutral uh, conductor. So 220.61 prevails here in that case. But now, uh, I'd like to point out that NFPA 70B uh, recommends that uh, when you open that uh, cover and you look at the uh, circuit mapping and you notice that the circuit mapping indicates that there's more 120 volt load uh, than 240 volt load and it's right up there close to the 240 volt load and size of the conductors then naturally it's going to be larger. But if you have more 240 volt single phase loads than 120 volt single phase loads, then the neutral conductor is going to be calculated smaller. So table 250.102C1 and use, will usually always produce the larger conductor for the fault current to travel over should a uh, fault current develop, such as one of the hot ungrounded conductors uh, go, uh, touching metal in some manner, defaulting some ma uh, manner to, to metal. So we want to keep this uh, uh, in focus here. Now, uh, previously uh, in, in the illustration, I quoted to you that table 250.66 uh, is only used if we connect the grounding electrode conductor to structural steel or a metal water pipe. But say that uh, the grounding electrode conductor is connected to a driven rod, and that is your uh, method of grounding the service. Now you would look at 250.66A, and it would only have to be number six. If, you, if, it, if, for example, if the grounding electrode conductor was connected to a concrete encased electrode, it would only have to be number four, no matter what size of service it might be. If we connected to a ground ring, then it may be number two in accordance with 250.66C as well as 250.52, uh, I believe it's A4 that we would look at. So this is some information about the service. So if we calculated, say, 417 amp, then 240.4B as in boy in the code would allow the user to select a 450 amp overcurrent device from table 240.6A. But if the uh, designer or the installer decided that they wanted to protect those conductors uh, at their ampacity rating, then we would use a 400 amp device which would protect those conductors. And if that uh, 400 amp overcurrent device would allow the amount of amps needed to supply the load, then the designer uh, could say, this is okay. But notice we shouldn't be changing conductor sizes as electricians without going back through the approval of the designing engineer or contractor if that should be the case. 
So this is just some added information for the benefit of anyone designing, installing, maintaining, uh, or inspecting. But now notice, if table 250.66 is used to size the grounding electrode conductor, all your grounding conductors in that panel board will be the same size. Have to be at least the same size. Uh, you could have a, a, the same size grounding conductor, the same size bonding jumper, main bonding jumper. If you happen to bond, say, the metal piping uh, into that grounded terminal bar, it would be the same size. Uh, if you uh, size the grounding electrode conductor and connect it to structural steel or metal water pipe, it would be the same size. Now here's an example. Say that we had four alt conductors terminating to that circuit breaker in the panel board. Based upon four alt, we'd go to table 250.66 and the grounding electrode conductor connected to a water pipe or to structural steel would be number two per table 250.66 based upon four alt conductors terminating in a 225 amp main. But the grounded conductor coming in that terminates to that terminal bar to be used as a conductor for the path, uh, an effective path for the fault current to travel over, it would be number two also. But it would be selected as previously stated from table 250.102C1. And you uh, say that uh, you supplemented the green screw in a panel board with a conductor it would have to be number two also. It couldn't be number six. It would have to be the same size uh, just in case it was actually called upon to uh, bond that panel board, the grounding conductor, uh, the grounding electrode conductor, uh, all your neutrals, all your equipment grounds going out as branch circuits or feeders. So uh, this is some additional information that we would uh, obtain from Article 250 of the NEC. But this just is giving you a little bit more uh, information to go by uh, when you're determining the amps of a service based upon the transformer size and the supply voltage. Now this figure 4-3 is illustrating 240 volt, 120 volt, single phase, three wire systems. 